Hi everybody and welcome to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me. In February, I promised you a quick review of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Hereafter known as BMPCC, or just plain black magic, or maybe just blur. Anyway, welcome to this quick review. Okay, to start with, this will be videoed using both the Nikon Z6, my normal vlogging camera, and the BPCC for a side-by-side -side comparison. This plan has a massive flaw in it, of course. Namely, am I using the best settings for the Blackmagic to begin with? The answer could well be no, but remember one thing, I'm not a professional videographer or a technician. I'm not a physicist, and I'm certainly not someone who's heavily into the technicalities of the camera or the lens. I am, however, a lover of all things photographic, and I'm also lucky enough to earn a living doing what I love. And I love taking photographs, and I love generally playing with cameras. The second thing I must say is that whatever DSLR you've ever used, nothing has prepared you for using one of these. I was so far out of my comfort zone that it was a small hazy blob in the distance. I don't normally give you my conclusion at the beginning of a video, but on this occasion I'll make a statement. This is way more video camera than I could possibly ever need. Ever. My first impression was this video camera is pretty impressive. And after I'd formatted my SD card using this fantastic idiot proof safety system, the next thing that hit me was, wow, it can go through memory cards absolutely voraciously. I've got an empty SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 gigabyte SD card in there. And when I set it to 60 frames per second, and yes, I know, why would I want to use that? But when I did, and five to one format, and HD 1920 to 1080, it said that it had only 53 minutes of recording available. Okay, fair enough, I guess you say, for the quality. If I'd taken advantage of the Ultra HG HD, I got 13 minutes, and that's reduced even further to 12 minutes if I'd used 4K DCI. And that's all using Blackmagic RAW. I can't seem to record higher frame rates with the card, even though it's a half decent 170 megabytes per second. It will still only give me a few seconds. And that's recording time before it's too much for the card. That's my, that's my guess, it's too much for the card. I'm thinking it probably can't write fast enough for the, for the sheer volume of information the camera's trying to cram into it. So I bought a 63 gigabyte CFast card that has 550 megabytes per second and fitted it. So what did it do? It'll still only give me 17 seconds at 60 frames a second, Ultra HD and 3 to 1 before switching off completely again. Taking it back to 25 frames a second again and we managed 42 seconds before the little red explanation started flashing and it switched off again. Now I think that means it's missing frames if I'm right. But let me know what I was doing wrong below. Maybe you've sorted it out. Maybe it's got something to do with the stop recording if card drops frame tick box, whatever that means. Anyway, let me know. Let me know what you think, as ever. <laughs> I can get differing times, of course, dependent on the quality. 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1 resolution and frame rates. This is being done, this particular video is being done at 25 frames per second, Ultra HD, and I'm getting 33 minutes, which is decent. But as you can see, if you want fast frame rate and cinema quality, oh boy, it can be a memory greedy little camera. Well, actually, maybe not so little. I mean, just what size pockets do they think we have? And that brings us to another subject, doesn't it? The rear touch screen. It's an impressive five inches wide, which actually makes the whole camera pretty large. In fact, it's an inch and a half or five centimeters wider than the Z6. 
even the lumpy D5 loses a full inch to it. Mind you, it's nowhere near as heavy. The Black Magic actually only weighs 722 grams, but that's still heavier if you compare it to the Z6, which has a reported weight of only 675 grams. Both those, of course, are without lenses, but either, either way, you can't really describe either one of them as exactly hefty. But back to that rear screen, it is nothing short of pure genius. The layout of the menu is, re menu is really easy to read and playback is an absolute pleasure to watch, even with my videoing. The touch screen works perfectly and checking both memory cards is really, really easy, as is making adjustments on the go. In fact, certain functions can be adjusted using the slider, such as ISO, frame rate, and aperture, or iris as it calls it. I'll tell you what, it's when you go into that menu that the true depth of this camera of it reveals itself. It has a staggering number of adjustments, some of which I've never even heard of. If I were trained to use it, I can imagine there would be some great, great things that could be achieved with this camera. Sadly, I'm not trained. One of the things that really caught me out was the sensor crop factor. I'd not used a four thirds camera before and though I was expecting some magnification, what I hadn't realized was the difference that resolutions make. For instance, HD 1920 to 1080 was way, way too magnified and made indoor use virtually impossible, especially with the Lumex 45 to 150. Ultra HD 3840 by 2160 and 4K DCI 4096 by 2160 are far more sensible and far more usable. Now apparently you can get something called a Metabones Speed Booster Adapter, which according to the manufacturer is mounted between a mirrorless camera and an SLR lens. Speed Booster increases maximum aperture, hence its name. Increases MTF and makes lens wider. Lens wider, okay. Now, MTF, I'm reliably informed, stands for Modulation Transfer Function, which, as I understand it, is how a measurement of how well the lens performs. Now, <laughs> I could go into the science and the physics behind it, but I think my little brain would explode, my eyes would pop out, and none of us want to see that. Suffice it to say, it's something that the people in lab coats would get very, very excited about. But if I read too much more about the subject, I would certainly be collected by a totally different set of men in white coats, and then probably driven off to somewhere a little more secure. To be honest, if the Metabone Speed Booster Adapter allowed me more or wider apertures, that would be just great and it would solve my next concern. Pretty much everything within 10 feet is in focus at f5, which is the widest I can get with this camera. Now, obviously I want the background to be much, much less sharp than me because I want to stand out. Mind you, the fact that everything's in focus is really useful as there doesn't appear to be any focus tracking at all. Now, I know I've only had this lens and camera for a short time, but it appears to me that the only way to focus is to press a little button on the back of the camera. It seems to be a little bit half-hearted to me, but I'm sure the professional video bods would find it quite normal. As a photographer, I find it quite perplexing. Now, a personal rant brought to you by Sean Cameron Photographic. Do you know, as a photographer, I find it absolutely inconceivable that it only has the same autofocus as SLRs from the 80s. Can you imagine if Canon, Nikon, Sony produced a camera that only had autofocus and no video tracking? 
there would be an absolute outcry. And yet this is what we get with this high tech camera. I'm truly, truly astounded. Anyway, back to the review. Wow, that guy was angry. <laughs> now back to the review as he says. As a photographer, I really wanted to do a final test and use this. It's the stills shutter button. It's this thing here. It's perilously close to the record button and you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is a video camera, pure and simple. But it does have this little trick up its sleeve. It will shoot 8.8 .8 megapixel images. Now it has its limitations, for instance, it will only shoot one image at a time. It's a bit disconcerting because there's no digital shutter sound. In fact, the only indication you get that it's even taken a photograph is a very, very tiny little camera icon in the top right corner of the, the, the screen. To be honest, with the sun shining, it's almost impossible to see. The camera as default is set to shutter angle. So to make any sense of the settings for shutter speed, you need to go into the menu. And then you switch the shutter from shutter angle to shutter speed. Now, if you think you'd like to check the image using the excellent rear screen, you're out of luck. The camera actually saves the image as a single DNG in a sub menu. So in actual fact, you don't get to see it until it's downloaded. In essence, what you've done is you've taken a single frame and that's pretty much how the camera deals with it. Now, it's a brilliant video camera, but it's never going to replace your DSLR or mirrorless as a, as a camera, as a stills camera. But I'll tell you what, it's a handy trick if you're out videoing and say you want to capture an image to use in that video later. Not forgetting that it will still only be 8.8 .8 .8 megapixels. Okay, like most cameras doing video, this camera chews through batteries with the, the easy abandon of a man sitting in a battery factory. That's fine, we expect it. But I tell you what, why, oh, why did they have to make extracting the charger lead so difficult? I mean, I don't exactly have hobbit fingers, but I shouldn't have to look for a handy elf or a pair of long nodes pliers to get the thing out. Anyway, another gripe I thought I'd mention. Now I do of course understand the technology behind cameras and photography, but it's not my main interest and I'm not driven by it. And as I've said before in this video, I'm not a trained videographer. So if you're a keen photographer who enjoys his photography or fancies getting a high-tech video camera and wonders what it does straight out of the box pretty much, then this video has been for you. If you're a videographer and I've got loads of things wrong, I apologise. It's all my personal opinion and my personal experiences. As for the camera, I personally came to the sad realisation that my skills set falls somewhat short of what this camera needs to drive it to the finish line in any kind of winning fashion. And to be honest, I'm better off sticking to the, the Z6 with its much maligned focus tracking. But I'll tell you what, at least it's got focus tracking. <laughs> Thank you to my subscribers and all of you who've commented on my last videos, good or bad. It's nice to know you care. If you've liked this video, then please press the like button. And you know what I'm gonna say, if you really liked it, why don't you try on the subscribe button? I know it'll suit you. See you soon. And until then, take care and keep taking photographs or videos in this case. See you soon.